Hello. So last week, um, the column was about spots and acne and how to treat them. However, I'm realistic enough to know that um, for most of us, what we really want to do is cover them. You can't um, get rid of them. You can't guarantee that you're not going to have a spot. Um, some of us will just always get them up popping every, up every now and then. And um, we want to know how to cover them up as best we can so that you can go about your day without constantly thinking you've got this glowing spot on your chin or whatever. So today I'm going to talk about cover up. And this is absolutely the one thing I get asked about almost more than anything um, is how do you cover up a spot. So I'm going to show you. Um, I have been trying to cultivate a whopper. I thought I might have um, a big spot to cover up so you could really, really see. Um, but I've only got a couple. I normally don't have any, I have to say, because I've got such um, dry skin. But um, I have got a couple. And the reason I've got a couple is because I've been testing cleansing wipes for a, a month or so and my skin's not looking that great. So this is the best you're going to get in terms of a demo, I think. So I don't know which one to cover. There is one there that's a bit evil and there's one there so I'll, I'll do one of those maybe both. Um, the first thing I wanted to say before I start on that is that I always, always, always um, put foundation on first. Now some makeup artists and um, lots of beauty editors and stuff will recommend that you put concealer on first then foundation over the top. The argument for that is that you don't know how much you're going to need so you might find that if you just put on concealer first you don't actually need foundation. Um, so there's no point putting on foundation then doing the concealer. I sort of understand that argument. However, I've had the same face for 36 years. I know how much I'm going to need just by looking at it. I don't think I need to put on my concealer to work out whether I'm gonna need something extra. You know, you know whether you want to put foundation on and you know whether you just want to dab a bit of concealer on to go out. So I put concealer on second, and the reason I do this is that once I've got my foundation on, or my tinted moisturiser, I don't wear foundation during the day generally, once I've got my base on, then I can see what I'm dealing with and what I have to add. Um, so that's why I do it that way. And I also think that if you put concealer on first, you just rub it off when you um, massage in your um, foundation or tinted moisturiser. You just undo all your good work, which just seems really silly to me. So I always do concealer second. Before you've even put on anything, you wake up in the morning, you've done your skincare routine, so you've washed your face in the shower and put on some serum and moisturiser, or you've used your cleanser. At that point, and skincare is the most important thing in tackling spots, but at that point, if it is an absolute whopper and it's really red and just really horrible and you, you really want to minimise it, take some eye drops, just normal eye drops like um, Optrex or whatever you've got lying around. The reason these are brilliant is that eye drops restrict blood flow to get rid of bloodshot eyes. If you drop a few eye drops on a really red spot, generally you will lose some of the reddening, which is really, really good. Also, it will give you a sort of oil-free base to put your concealer on because it will wash away any oil and um, it will make concealer stick to the spot more and not slide off with your moisturiser. So do that in the first instance. Um, I mean, literally, as you imagine, they're quite good actually, because eye drops have obviously got a tiny little nozzle so you can really direct them. So you literally just squeeze a dab of eye drop on, leave it for a few minutes and that should minimize some redness. The other thing I wanted to say is, and my God, don't treat this for anything else but an emergency. If you have an enormous spot and you are about to get married, and I do get this email quite a lot. People who have a really huge spot and they have an incredibly special occasion, almost always because they're about to get married and they're going to be in all the photographs. You can, in an emergency, go and see a dermatologist or even your GP and they will give you a cortisone shot quite often into the spot which will get rid of it. This is not to be taken lightly and frankly it's not a thing to waste NHS money on. Only in an emergency you can do that. Just like if you have an emergency cold sore and you've got a wedding coming up or something, you can go and see your GP um, if they're not too um, snowed under with proper appointments. But generally you can do this in an absolute emergency. So please don't worry that on your wedding day you're gonna have a huge spot on your chin because it is treatable. But for the rest of us, we should handle things on our own. So this is how you're going to do it. You've done your eye drops. After your eye drops have dried and sunken in and the redness has gone, put on your foundation or your tinted moisturizer. 
then you're putting on your concealer. Now I'm going to show you a bit of kit here to show you what you're dealing with. This is an illuminating pen. This is not a concealer. I see so many women covering spots with these, like Touche Eclat or airbrush concealer, whatever. It is not a cover-up. It is a highlighting pen to take away dark circles and put light on your face. If you put one of these on the spot, you will just make it glow. They're not opaque enough to cover spots. They're too sheer. You'll get nowhere. This is not a concealer. What you do need is a proper concealer. Concealer can come in a stick or it can come in a pan like this. These are two that I use mainly. So this one is by Creme de la Mer, which I realise is expensive, but I have had this for almost a year and look how much is left. You need the tiniest amount. It's so dense and so rich. That would easily last you a year, if not two years, and it doesn't seem to go off. It is completely a brilliant concealer. Can't speak highly enough about it. This one, as you can see, very well loved, is by Bobbi Brown and it's called Creamy Concealer. And the joy of this is it comes in a compact with powder and I'm gonna show you why you need that in a bit. So when it comes to choosing a concealer, you want a dense creamy concealer in either a stick or a pan. And in terms of color, you want a color that is one shade lighter than your foundation. I always say with foundation and powder, you should match your skin tone exactly and I stand by that. But with concealer, you want to go one shade lighter, not much lighter. If you make it much lighter, it'll just glow, but not darker because then it won't cover anything. It'll just make the spot darker. You want it one shade lighter always. And you want a yellow base, in my opinion. I've talked about this so extensively in other videos. I won't bore you with it anymore, but don't get a pink one. Get a yellow one, whatever your skin tone. So I'm going to use this Creme de la Mer one today. You then need a concealer brush. Now, as, as, as I've said before, as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to use creamy products like a concealer, you want a synthetic bristle. If you're going to use powdery products like a face powder, you want a natural bristle. So I'm using a synthetic bristle. These are both synthetic bristle brushes. Now I use these for concealer. Some people like to use a lip brush and that's fine too. Um, because they, even though these are big, because they have a really tapered end, I'm able to apply a really tiny amount of concealer with them. But if you're less sure of yourself, get a lip brush. A lip brush is totally fine too for concealer. But in general, a synthetic, because if you get a natural bristle, it will absorb the concealer and it won't come off onto your face. This is my favorite one. This is by Stila. So you've got con your concealer, you've got your brush, and the last thing you need is face powder. Face powder sets your concealer. If you don't set your concealer with face powder, it will just go on the move. And if it's a really bad spot, we're going to do a sandwich between powder and concealer and powder. And that works really, really well. If you just use concealer, there's only so much coverage you'll get and it will move within the hour probably. So you need face powder. The face powder I use, when I'm at home and doing my makeup in the morning, I use Clinique Gentle Light. It is superb, especially if you're over 30. It has the lightest sort of iridescent particles in it. Um, not glittery, not teenage, just a really light sheen. It's absolutely brilliant. That's what I use. And when I'm out and about, I use Bobbi Brown pressed powder. There is no difference these days between pressed and loose powder. It used to be that um, pressed powder was more oily in texture and loose powder was drier. It's just not the case anymore. The milling techniques are so good now that they take a loose powder and they simply press it with no added ingredients and it comes out as a, as a solid powder. So I use that one when I'm out and about. You only need one. I've only got two because I've got too many products, but um, if you only get one, the pressed one is totally fine because you don't want to take a big messy thing out with you. Right, so Take a magnifying mirror that really, really, really shows up your skin. Take your concealer and your brush. And you really need the tiniest amount. You don't need to load up your brush the way I normally show you to. You just need a tiny amount on the tip. And this is so, so dense that you really, really do need a tiny amount. So you've got your foundation on, da, 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 da. no powder at this stage, you've just got your foundation on. Go to the spot and dab a little concealer. Oh, I'll do both. 
dab a little concealer on the spot that you want to cover with the brush. You use the brush just because it's more direct. If you are somebody who suffers from spots a lot, you want to make sure you keep this brush clean and, and wash it really regularly because they do kind of carry bacteria after a while. Um, I just wash mine in um, shampoo normally. Okay, so you've got the concealer on there. Then take your little finger and just pat it and the patting will blur the edges of the dot that you've put over the spot. Do not rub because you're just taking it all away. You're just making life difficult. It will be there all day. Just pat it. I'll show you that again. Pat with your little finger and just blur the edges. I mean, I would obviously use this in any dark areas. So here, for example, on my chin, but we're just talking about spots today. Oh, look, I found another one. Oh, my skin is so bad after the cleansing wipes. Right. And some more there. Dab some on, little finger, and just blur the edges. Put a little more on if you want. Okay, so you're spotted basically covered at this point. That won't last. If you go out now, within the hour, it'll be peeping through again. So you then, and this is massively important, take your powder, low depth of velour puff, which will come with the compact usually, dab off the excess, and then just press the powder into where you've just applied the concealer. That will set it. And then brush away the excess. Okay, so then what will happen is you now have a matte surface again. You've trapped in one layer of concealer and you have a matte surface again. Take your concealer brush again. Obviously, if you were just lightening darkened areas, you would only need to do this once, but spots have a habit of peeping through. And do another layer of concealer. You, at this stage, you probably won't need to dip your brush back in the concealer. There'll probably be enough on, especially if it's a good one. See, that was quite red and that's already covered up. But I'm gonna do another layer. Back to what you were doing before, little finger. Now, if you're using a good quality concealer and powder, it won't be caking, it should go on just nicely. And you've got so little on your brush by the end anyway that you hardly have to blend or feather it at all. You can always just brush it on, it's fine. Then take your powder again I'll use the loose one this time, just so you can see. Velour puff. And you can sort of roll it on. And that's it. So if you see that the redness has completely gone 
If they're really, really, really severe, you can go back and you can do another layer, but you need to keep sandwiching. Putting tons and tons of concealer on is gonna do nothing because it'll just wipe straight off. Tiny layer of concealer, tiny layer of powder, concealer, powder, concealer, powder. And if you've got good quality products, you could probably do three layers without it looking really cakey and if it's the right color choice. Um, for most of us, once is sufficient, but if it's really, really stubborn, you might need to give it a couple of goes. Um, so I hope that makes sense and um, I hope um, that you find that effective. That's what makeup artists do um, and I find it works absolutely brilliantly. And um, when you're on the move as well, you can take the eye drops with you and you can just, you know, top them up in the afternoon to take away some redness again. And also there's ice. You can put an ice cube in um, a handkerchief or a tissue or something and hold it on the spot and that will really, really, really take down the redness too. Um, but for most of us, um, concealer is sufficient throughout the day and make sure you take makeup off in the evening because that's the quickest way to get rid of a spot, not treatments. Just a proper cleanse is the best way. So let me know how you get on with that technique in the comments section. Thanks a lot. Bye.